Hey guys, Triggermeister here. I'm going to do a short video on uh, AR-15 buffers today. And uh, the reason I'm making this video is because I actually had <laughs> my first issue with uh, the uh, Carry's Gun uh, pistol. Um, uh, pistol kit buffer that I bought. And uh, I think I found the reason why I had an issue on uh, the uh, extraction and so I did a previous video on how to swap out the uh, extractor spring for a heavy duty extractor spring and um, I don't think that was it so and uh, here's the so let me first uh, do the show you quick the, the lineup so we have a uh, carries guns uh, buffer then we have the Palato State Armory buffer and uh, here's a uh, mil spec buffer modified so uh, obviously you can see it's modified because uh, <laughs> it's a heck of a lot shorter than uh, all the, than both uh, the other buffers so and uh, just in case you're curious the modified buffer is for my Michigan pistol and um, the the Michigan pistol designation uh, well, it still exists, but uh, you can no longer register a Michigan pistol, which is basically a, a rifle that is under 30 inches in length. And uh, because it's shorter, it has a uh, shorter, and needs a shorter buffer. So I got the weights down just as a comparison. So we got 2.8 ounces on the Carries Guns buffer. The Paletto State Armory is 3 ounces, and then uh, the modified one is also 3 ounces. So I should note that the modified one has actually lead in it versus uh, the other ones, which uh, generally have uh, steel in it. So uh, on the carry gun, carries guns buffer, uh, what when I pulled it out, I noticed that the roll pin was actually sticking out on one side. And uh, so what happened was... I believe that the roll pin was catching on the spring and must have walked out for one reason or another and uh, so it was driving the uh, the the stop into the side of the spring and then it ended up of course peeling back the aluminum on the buffer and uh, which ended up well basically ruining Offer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, email a couple of pictures to Carrie's Guns. Hopefully they'll take care of me and um, we'll be back in business. But um, since I was going to shoot this gun today and uh, it's uh, about 8 o'clock here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this, um, this buffer and uh, I'm going to try to salvage it for now and... Uh, maybe turn it into an extra heavy buffer so to do that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the um, take this buffer I'm gonna trim off the uh, flared piece and uh, then I'm gonna take some uh, lead bullets that I have and what I basically melt them down and I'm gonna fill this tube as much as I can with uh, lead so I'm gonna uh, fill it to the point basically where the stopper so I can still fit I can still fit the stopper into the, the buffer so stay tuned should be a quick little uh, project I'm anticipating it'll take uh, probably about half hour to an hour to get all that accomplished so here we go all right so the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to part off that uh, flared area i'm going to use uh, my lathe to uh, do that so uh, here we go <laughs>
Now we're going to pull it out and uh, then we'll uh, start uh, heating up the, uh, the lead that we are going to pour in. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is light the burner with our uh, lighter. And then we are going to take the lead and I weighed out four ounces. And uh, it should start melting pretty quickly, but we have uh, bullets in here that have been lubed before, and so it might sizzle a little bit. Like I said, you know, in a pinch you can do it over a candle. <laughs> Alrighty. We'll be right back. Alright. Oh, don't want to leave it on the one spot too long. So there we go now we got it nice and liquid all right here we go oh all right a little bit too much So, we'll be back. So, unfortunately, I overfilled uh, the buffer with lead. So, it took me a little bit longer to uh, get the lead out uh, to the point where I could fit the stopper in without it bottoming out. So, it wasn't that hard to do because lead is so soft. So, I, I used a, a drill and uh, took out... And plunged it in from the top to take out uh, just an, enough lead so with the stopper would fit. So I got the stopper back in already. Um, I used uh, Loctite Red since uh, this stopper is uh, you know threaded. And uh, the reason I used red is because uh, Loctite Green can attack some plastics and I didn't want to take the risk of it dissolving the threads on here. So I also... Well, uh, did mark where the uh, previous holes were and you can see they're almost a line the green line here indicates where the hole is on the stopper and then you can see the divot there where the uh, other hole is um, or was in the in the tube itself here so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually rotate it 90 degrees plunge a hole through put the roll pin through call it good and uh, let's go wait real quick here to see where we ended up. So, all right, so we're at four ounces. And uh, before we started, uh, this was at uh, 2.8 ounces. So we added uh, 1.2 ounces, which is a <laughs> pretty significant uh, improvement in weight. So the more weight that you can add to the buffer, of course, that'll slow your cycle rate down a little bit. And uh, as I mentioned before, when you have uh, high cycle rate ARs, if you can slow it down a little bit, it'll make everything much more reliable. And uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to testing it. So uh, stay tuned. Hey guys, Triggermeister here. This is a quick addendum to the uh, how to make an extra heavy buffer tube. And uh, if you guys recall, I actually had to trim this uh, buffer tube on the left down because it was uh, peened over. And uh, long story short is uh, I just took it out to the range. I shot it. <laughs> I had more jams with it than I had ever before. 
and uh, then I decided to, you know, I had to put in the um, uh, Palmetto State Armory buffer tube on the right hand side and everything worked fine and so I thought about it and uh, then I realized of course since I shortened it the stroke is going to be further back so what I did is I used an AR-15 9mm trick which is using quarters to actually uh, uh, adjust the stroke of the the BCG and I added the quarters to the buffer tube so when I added the five quarters to it it brought it brought both of them back to the same height and everything ran great so um, I guess this is just a reminder for anybody that does shorten a uh, buffer you have to make sure that it matches the length of uh, your uh, original buffer or you're gonna have to adjust the buffer tube so if you're gonna trim your buffer tube back then of course it's fine so what I did is I turned down a one inch piece of round stock and uh, that's about the height of five quarters and as you can see now they are both perfectly aligned the same height so hope you enjoyed this video and uh, please subscribe to my channel and have fun at the range.